Hello, stampers. It's Faye from Faye's Stampin' Studio. Thank you for stopping by this evening. And today we're going to talk about the Butterfly Brilliant stamp set. That is, uh, it's a, it's actually a one stamp, one great big stamp. Um, yeah. And so we're going to do a couple of a technique, and it's called it's sometimes called double embossing or rainbow embossing. So I, um, it's a, a shout out to Stampin' Ventures with Shauna. That's where I actually saw this technique and she did an amazing job presenting it. And so I decided that I would like to give it a shot as well. Now, this was my first one that I made and this was the idea that Shauna had used and I used Fresh Freesia and Gorgeous Grape and Copper Embossing Powder as well as Clear Embossing Powder on this one and made it with Gorgeous Grape and Fresh Freesia and of course the basic white cardstock. So that was the first sample and it's just beautiful done this way but I decided I was going to try it and use the dies and cut my butterflies apart. So then this was the next one that I made and I liked the way, I really liked the way it turned out as well. I stamped it and then some of these butterflies were stamped off the edge so I just attached them where they would fit onto my card. And this one I used Balmy Blue and Pacific Point and clear embossing powder as well as silver embossing powder. It's kind of hard to to catch that on there. And and then this is from the basic tag dies. Um, these cute little tags. I really like them. I love the way they've got that little extra reinforcement up in the corner. And this is the elegant twine. I'm, I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Um, it is actually called Simply Elegant Trim. my lights went dim anyway there okay it's back again and so that's this one and then I also use the uh, the silver epoxy essentials on this one so and this designer paper is from the uh, hydrangea hill uh, paper um, hi Dee Dee nice to see you come on here tonight and then this is the this is another one I made, and this one I used the designer paper from the butterfly paper, but you cannot get it. So that was so disappointing that we weren't able to get a, a hold of it anymore. And um, so then again, I've used I used I I can't forget which yellow this was. I think it was Daffodil Delight, the silver embossing. And if you believe this or not, this is Pacific Point and it turned like more like uh, shaded spruce green. So it's gonna be a surprise what we come up with tonight because I'm gonna try some different, some different colors again just so we can get more samples out there. And then this is the, oh, what the heck are these called? Um, oh, I'll think of it, I guess. Can't think of it, oh, here, here they are. They're the genial gems, these guys. And then the other thing that I did on this one was I also used, you can see the centers here. They, I used the, the shimmery, the shimmery crystal effects pen. And there is some shimmer in it, but I sprinkled a little bit of our dazzling diamonds um, on it when it was still wet. But you have to be so very careful with this when you do it that you don't touch it. It takes, Quite a while for that to dry so um, yeah you want to do that the very last thing on your card so now we're going to get right into um, making this next card um, so I'm going to maybe I'll just move my stamp set out of the way here for now and I'm going actually this time I'm going to bring in and I'm going to use I'm going to use my stamparatus as well um, for this one too. This works really good for the for this project the Stamparatus does. Get myself organized here. 
Um, I'm gonna need my stamp stamp case here. It just makes it nice for putting the stamp on. No, oh, I guess I could have had a better sheet in there. Things are gonna fall down on me here. Put one in here that's not all marked up. Forgot to change that here. So you want to make sure everything is pushed right up into the corner on the Stamparatus. And then this piece is actually a quarter of a piece. I used a little bigger piece than I used before. So a little bit more of it will be on there. We'll get a little bit more of the butterfly image. So the first step in this is, is to ink up our background stamp. And with that, we will we'll use our lightest shade of stamp. And I decided I'm going to, going to try Flirty Flamingo. So this is all an experiment. So we'll see how they turn out. So I've, I've got it inked up. It's good to be nice and juicy um, to do this. It's great to have it nice and wet. So uh, that looks really good. And then you can just use your ink pad and touch the edges, but I liked it better just to using my my um, sponge dauber, and I just brought some ink in and put it onto the edges or wherever I wanted it. And I'm not really going to get mech, mech up this card or this ink pad much because it's quite a bit darker than what the flirty flamingo is. This guy's going to have a body that's blue. You can put her as much in as you want or as little. And Like I said, it's going to be a, it's going to be an adventure tonight. We're just going to figure out what we like and what works the best. Boy, it was a windy day again eh, tonight, ladies. And I think that looks pretty good, I believe. So we want to make sure everything is good and moist. So I'm going to huff on it, just get a little bit of air going on there so that... And then make sure again that that's right up in the corner. And then we'll just push it down and rub it really good everywhere. We want to make sure that it actually gets on there. Give it time for the ink to transfer over to the other piece there. And the one thing that I do like about this is, is that I can actually Trying to play with my computer screen here. Sorry about that. Anyway, so let's have a look and see here. Ooh, stuck on there. Ooh, those are pretty colors. Those are nice together. It's funny how that once you put that blue over top of it, more looks more like a navy color, doesn't it? So I'm gonna see if I can push a little harder on this one, I think I'll add just a little bit more just to get it a little darker. And maybe this tip here. It's not gonna hurt anything. Kinda liked, like I said, I like the sponge daubers. They worked quite quite nicely. Okay, gotta make sure it's pushed right up in there. go and there it is yeah I think that looks pretty nice okay okay now I have to I have to clean this off next oh I forgot to wet my chamois darn it I'll just use a baby wipe. I forgot to have my chamois all wet. By the time I run off and get that, you guys will be bored. 
Hello, Inus. Uh, huh, glad you popped on here, and hopefully you can get a couple of um, hints and some good pointers that'll help you along in your stamping journey. Hi, Kim. Good to see you here. So you, if you missed the beginning, this is called a double embossing um, technique. So now I want to make sure that that's dry before I stamp it with the Versamark. And you want your Versamark to be nice and juicy too. So, and this this is Versamark, and for those of you that aren't aware, it's a it's a watermark. It's actually a watermark ink pad, and it works really good for like you can use this on any color of cardstock and you're just gonna get a darker image. It's just gonna show up as a darker image. So it's so versatile, you can really make a big difference with um, everything with lots of them. I wanna make sure, again, like I said, I wanna make sure it's nice and juicy and wet looking. Okay, so yeah, again, make sure that you've got that pushed up into the corners and then we're going to transfer this over here. Then our next step is going to be to do the embossing. And yeah. There it is. Play it's wet enough. Now I don't need this anymore. I'll just move it out of the way. And the next thing we're going to need is this here. I've got my container of um, embossing powder. So with this one, we're going to just use I got this tiny little spoon that I'll use for it. So this clear, you're go you're going to put going to put the clear just on a few areas, not all over. And then once we get what we want on the with the clear, we can use the. I'm going, to, I'm going to use gold on this one. I haven't done one with gold yet, so I've used the copper and I've used the silver a couple of times. So I'm really anxious to see what it's going to look going to look like with. Um, I always find you have to be relatively quick with the embossing powder before the Versamark dries too much because then it doesn't stick properly to it if you let it do that. Just put that lid on. Get this out of here. Ooh. Good thing that lid didn't fall off because it fell upside down on the floor. <laughs> Could have been a disaster. And then this is my gold embossing powder. So with the gold, we're going to cover all the images completely with the embossing powder. Oh no, I think it's drying too much. It's not working. It's getting too dry and it's not sticking on there like it should on that one for sure but hopefully it'll be enough on the other ones to stick on. Or maybe it's showing and I just think it's not on there. I will find out. You don't really see it the same, so. So wherever the clear is, the, um, that doesn't look like it's sticking for me. Might have to do that again. I'm not sure. Some spots, but maybe it'll turn out better than I think. Sometimes it does. Let's put that 
that away again. And now I have to bring out my heat, heat tool. This is the heat tool for those of you that aren't aware, familiar with it. It gets really hot, so you want to keep your hands back. And yeah, okay, so. I like to just hold it and you're just gonna heat it until it melts virtually is what it gets, it, it, it'll get all shiny, the surface. Hopefully you can hear me over this um, tool. And wherever I put the, the clear, the, the gold wouldn't stick on it. So, like I said, I hope it, it's going to turn out. I thought I had my Versamark pad nice and, and um, sticky. Hi, Lynn. How are you doing? Did you come to Centre Butte today for the garage sales? I didn't have a garage sale this year. If you wanted to bring your mom by, I've got lots of stamps and things that I would be selling, so if she's interested in looking again. little devil. Takes a few minutes to get this all hot. Yes, the butterflies are getting darker, aren't they, um, Diane? Yeah, I didn't expect the. It's because of the mixing of those two colors that you get a different shade than what you think you're going to have, going to have. So, like I said, I ended up with, um, more like navy opposed to that there. I'm coming back over a couple of these so thinking I didn't hate them quite long enough. The embossing is on there better than I thought it was. I didn't really think it was going to show, but it is showing up quite nicely. The problem is if you don't get it heated enough, then it will rub off. And now I can see it when I hold it on an angle. I'll show you once I'm finished here. Whew, sorry for all that noise, you guys. It's horrible. So this is what it, I don't know if you can see that well, the different, the shininess of it, where it is. And then these little specks are in the outside background. So we could do one of two things. We could make another card and just use this whole image or cut it down to fit but I think I'm I'm going to go with the um, with some more with cutting them I was hoping I was going to do um, a designer series background but okay I'm going to bring my my big shot in again here And we'll um, show you the, and I'm going to run it through with my dot. So, so these are the brilliant wings dies that come with this set. So, uh, yeah, and we're and I just have to fit them on there. do it over here where I have a little bit more room almost well I can one thing that's good about that is it gives me a bit more room I can close it up which is kind of a neat um, feature of the new um, cut and emboss machines they this ends both fold up so they don't take nearly as much space on your desk now this is washi tape that I'm using to kind of hold the dies in place because they tend to sometimes move when you're 
think that will work for that. Open that up again. And put this on here. Mm -hmm. Where did I put my, oh, there it is. I was going to say, where did I put my other, so then you have to make the sandwich and you've got the, you've got your main base, number one, and then you have the layering one, which is number two, and then you've got the die, the cutting plates, which are number three, and you're going to have two of them. And we're just going to put it on there and just get it going through. Pull the machine down. Try not to move the camera too much. And there we are. And these are all my pieces. I'm going to move this big shot out of the way again. You don't need it anymore. And now that I've done this, the person needs to decide on on um, a color of paper that's going to work. I don't know what I, I was hoping I could use some of my Dandy Garden designer series paper, but I don't know whether there'll be anything that's going to work. I suppose possibly that one would work. Where you got the stripes. Oh, you got this one here too, for a background. And that background. Um, I think that's both the only options that I've got in this piece here. Something that's going, going to coordinate. Oh, here's another one. Or there's that one. So we just have to decide which one we think we should use. What's your vote, Diane? Which one do you think we should put these on? <laughs> I kind of like it on one of these two pieces. They really make them pop. Nope. I think I'll use that one. And... So then we have to, I'll uh, have to bring in my paper cutter and I'm going to cut that down to get all my butterflies out of the way there. I'm going to cut it down to, I think we'll make it into a landscape one as well. So uh, that'll be three and three quarters by five and a quarter. No, by five. I want it by five. It's gonna be a half an inch smaller. And then, ah, we can either go with, a, we could go with, um, put this up here for a minute. See what other colors we can put with that. Of navy, I think we'll go with tonight. How about these? How about we put this onto here and then make this the main card base? This is Calypso Coral. It's interesting how it actually looks more like that than it does the flirty flamingo. So the, the Knight of Navy one, I'm going to cut it down to, I'm gonna, going to cut it down to four inches by five and a quarter. That way that'll give us a quarter of an inch, uh, bore, uh, eighth of an inch border all around. I like that because then it, and since I'm going to make it portrait, I'm going to 
actually make my score mark at five and a half. When I do portrait ones, I like them to fold um, this other way opposed to folding. And then we're going to cut it here. I think I'm finished with my paper cutter now. So I like to make the score mark this way. Not that you can't do it the other way, but I just find that they they probably just don't stay stand as nicely. So and just have to bring your bone folder in to to um, burnish that edge well. And these two pieces are going to go on there. And I don't want to forget, I want to put my trim on before I glue this on here. Sometimes I forget to do that, so it's easy to do when you're busy putting things together. So I'm going to use the Stampin' Seal to adhere this on. I really, I'm really getting to really like this stuff now, so... It's very sticky, though. So this dark color is nice on the white to actually try to get it lined up well. And uh, so then before I put that on, ooh, I think I've got a big long strip here out. Cheapers, it's all tangled up, you guys. Yeah, those butterflies really pop on that, um, on this piece of uh, designer paper. So there. But before I put that on, I, I want to kind of decide how I want to lay it. I think I'll lay it pretty similar to what I had up there. But I, I'm going to, well, maybe I'll put this one, this bigger one on there. And I'm always going to want a small one. But the small one needs to be down. And if we're going to, I'm going to just stamp on here as well, or maybe I'll put it up a little higher and then I can stamp down here. And if we decide that this is too big, we can always trim a little bit off of there too, just so that we've got more room to, to stamp our, our sentiment. I think I'm missing a piece here. I should have more than that for butterflies should have about five or six of them. But you can see that there's more gold on here, so that's what the gold looks like on there. I kind of like to decide what I want it to look like before I, I um, put that trim on there. I always like to lay everything out to make that decision. And then the stamp sets that I'm going to use for the sentiment, I think, are going to be, um, I think we'll make this one a birthday one. I'm not sure if there's any birthdays in here. Not. But there's happy birthday right there. And that's just a nice small font for on here, I think. So we're going to, going to use that one. And here's my happy birthday. And when, you, when you're putting these on the blocks, it's good just to kind of drop them down and then pick them up with your block because sometimes they twist a little bit and then you might not have it quite as straight as you would have normally have it. So I'm going to pull out my Knight of Navy to stamp that um, sentiment with. Just because it doesn't look like Pacific Point anymore, it looks like looks like Knight of Navy. And I'm going to use a foam pad for putting under here to get a nice crisp impression. It's always a good idea to use that um, with this like that. And there the happy birthday is. So I think that turned out okay. I think it's, this is gonna be so pretty when we're finished. 
So you liked it sort of hanging over, did you? Um, we could do that for sure. We just we just can't have it hanging over the whole card, that's for sure, right? But it certainly could hang over like that. It would come up instead of over the navy, or it could be like that. Actually, yeah, that is kind of neat. Makes it different. So I am going to use, I think I'll use my liquid adhesive for these guys. Well, where did I put my, where did I put my string? Oh, right in front of me there. I am going to put this on here. I'm just going to do it. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to use a piece of um, just my scotch tape to tape it, hold it in the back. That seems to work as good as anything, is to take out a piece of scotch tape. So you just need a nice piece of that. Got to decide the, the height again for sure. That's about the right place. Then I'll have to try and you can use your grid paper for getting it straight on there. So you can use it to line up this so you get your, so you get it straight. You got it slightly underneath there, so. Mm -hmm. There, that looks cute. Now my butterfly here, this guy. This one, since I've got that cord there, instead of gluing it right on, I can, I'll add a couple of dimensionals in behind that one to make it pop over top of the edge of the cord. So there, that one can go just like that. I won't put this one on until I get it mounted onto the I think I'll hold off on that one too. You can use whatever kind of adhesive you want on this. I think I'll use my liquid this time again. But either one of the liquid, either this or the um, stamp and seal runner will work quite nicely. I just want to put a little bit around that scotch tape. this on here these are nice springy colors looks like spring has sprung here we can go up there or we can go down here I'm gonna I'm going to go just up past the Navy and I'll use my liquid glue for that one. Well, it wasn't quite as hot out today as it was the last couple days. At least I didn't think it was quite as bad. Then the last one, ooh, yeah, I was lucky I tossed that over there. And this one I'm going to put, I'm going to use these dimensional, this dimensional in behind it. It's one strip. But I think that piece is a little longer than I need. Trim a piece of it off. Then the last thing I'm going to show you is the yeah, pop that. I always like them going different directions. So I'm going to show you how you can put that other on. Now these extras, I there should be one more, I'm thinking somewhere. Well, maybe not, two, four, five. Eh, maybe there's just five. 
These are some that I had left from the other cards I did. So they're never wasted. You can always use them on something else. And I can use these ones here on the outside of my envelopes. I can could use it on the inside of my card. There's numerous things a person could do. So this here is the shimmery crystal effects. And I'm going to put it on the bodies of all three of my butterflies. But I've got to be very careful not to touch it. Uh, and then just set it off to dry because it... Um... So this is really quite thick and it gives it a nice dimension. There is a little bit of glimmer in it, but it, not as much as what... Um... Not as much as I wanted, so that was why I added the added the um, dazzling diamond glitter to it, because this this does take a little bit of uh, time to dry. So for sure, it'll be sitting off off the back of my counter here for a while. Otherwise, I'll forget it and try to and touch the silly thing. So. Now I am going to use, maybe I'll just use this, my little spatula here for lifting and, and pour this glitter right on it. I've got the body quite big here, so I think that'll be nice. lid on my glitter. Now I, I'm going to just grab a piece of scrap paper to shake that off onto. And as you can see now, can you see the shiny on the butterfly bodies? If you got the picture there or not. And then we can finish it off with some more jewels if we want. Throw that into the garbage can. Better close my ink pads up here. I've got a couple of them sitting open, so I'll end up touching them. Usually stick my fingers in them at some point. And we can decide on more jewels. Actually, I I'm thinking that so that's gold trim. Hmm. really see anything here I'm liking. Don't think. But you can always make your own if you don't have what you want. So uh, I'll quickly share with you how we can make the, our own da jewels to match. So Calypso Coral is, I'm going to make them into Calypso. Oop, that's dark. Crazy and craze. Wrong color. Calypso Coral right here. The dark Calypso Coral blends. You can use these to color every kind of gem you want. So you can just color them. I think I'll just use three. We'll color these up. And the more times you color them, the little darker they'll get. So get on there. I'm just gonna pop those on there. Oh, try not, try not to touch my crystal effects since it's not use the other end, Faye, silly girl. You know better. <laughs> there. Sometimes that works well, and next time it might not. There. Okay. So, here's our finished finished um, project. And I think it's turned out quite lovely. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, and please give it a like and a share. And follow me if you're not already following me. And I'm going to probably post this on YouTube at some point as well. So, And if you're interested, I can post the measurements as well. So I hope you can join me again next Friday at 8 o'clock to do another card. So... Thanks for coming by and we'll see you next week. Okay, good night everybody.